Hello and welcome back again. I have another project I'm going to work on, this time something not too difficult and I should be able to do it relatively easy. My brother's computer got hacked or so, uh, so I have to check it for viruses and stuff, but while I have it in my possession and I'm helping him, I'm going to see about maxing out the RAM because I believe I have enough spare RAM sticks to do that for him, and also about cloning his hard drive to a solid state drive. So I'm not going to list the model number right now, just because the laptop uh, doesn't seem to list it on the bottom. Well, maybe if I remove the battery, it should actually have the part. It's an HP laptop. It originally had Windows 8 on it. You can tell from the sticker's design. Uh, it's running Windows 10 now. The original charger, the original battery. It's a couple years old now. So this was an HP Envy M6 notebook PC. Uh, it's a model M6 slash 1225D. I don't really see a manufacturer date on this that's easy to read. I know sometimes they're coded in ways, but I'll just leave it at that. So the battery has been removed. I'm going to just push the power button while that's the case and let it discharge anything that's on there. And we're going to pop this open. And I'm going to see what you need to do to upgrade the RAM and then also see about accessing the hard drive and cloning it over to an SSD for him. So there's one screw right here in the center of this panel. I believe this one will show the drive, just judging by its shape. Once you get that loose enough, you should be able to just kind of... There's a spring on the screw be able to slide this out. It's a bit tighter than I thought. Yeah. Yeah, it popped out. Alright, so this was adhesed a little bit to the drive. And it is a hard drive, like I thought. And it looks like we won't have to pop this part off, but I will just in case. We'll see what's in there. There's one screw that holds this panel in place, and I think it's probably just going to be the Wi-Fi card. Yep, that's where the Wi-Fi card goes. It looks like there's another slot for a card. I am not going to look into that right now. That's not the purpose of this project. Most likely if that Wi-Fi card is not also Bluetooth, the second slot is for a Bluetooth card for this unit. Now let's see what stock RAM came with this. As always, make sure you carefully pop these out. All right, so it looks like it has two four gig sticks of a data RAM, and it looks like this is PC3, or this would be DDR3 RAM. The speed is 12800S, so I'm gonna check and see what this maxes out on, and then I'll see if it will take more than eight gigs of RAM. With a board like this, it's probably either eight or possibly even 16 gigs of RAM. Before I go and check the RAM, I'm going to take the drive out because I'm going to scan it for malware outside of it running Windows. I don't think they got any actual malware on there. I think they just got a remote connection and they tried to trick him into paying stuff. But just to make sure, I'm going to get this out. I'm going to scan it and then I'm going to work on backing up his data for him just in case. So there is four screws, there is a SATA cable, and you can pop it off quite easily. It looks like it came with a Hitachi drive inside of it. Now I'm going to remove this from its little bracket, and even though I'm going to put a solid state in there, and it's not as important to have a bracket, in case you're going to go and add a solid state to a computer that's missing the bracket because you bought it used, uh, depending on the framing of the unit, it's not that important to have the bracket with an SSD. You have a little chance of it getting knocked out of place, but not as much. Uh, with this unit, you would, just because the SATA device is not in a standard place. It's kind of just a cable that reaches out for flexibility of placing the drive in there. Now I'm gonna go and check and see how much RAM this board works on, and I'm also gonna scan this for viruses and back up my brother's hard drive. I'll be back in a minute. So a little bit of time has passed. I did clone his drive to a solid state drive. So now I just need to make sure I have it lined up properly to mount it in this enclosure. Not enclosure, the bracket. I'm not going to put all the screws in just yet. I'm going to actually boot it up and make sure that the clone worked. 
Uh, certain clone methods might not always work properly, so it's a good idea to kind of just test it out before you screw everything in. With SSDs, you don't have to worry about them staying still as much as you do traditional hard drives. So if they wobble around a little bit, it's kind of fine. So I'm going to put in this 8 gig RAM stick. And I don't know what size this RAM stick is, but I think they're both the same speed. We'll reattach the battery. Then I'm going to wipe this down just a little bit. It's a little bit dirty. A little dusty, if you want to like it. I've seen much worse computers working and tech support. You have no idea. Alright, let's see if it boots up normal. Alright, so if this happens, one possibility is that there's a setting in the BIOS that will keep you from uh, booting up from a new drive, so... So if we turn off Secure Boot, that might fix it. Save and exit, and we'll see if that works. All right. And that didn't work. The plus side, though, is the RAM does seem to work. So this might take a little longer than I thought. What I'll have to do is probably clone it from inside the OS itself. So I don't know what's exactly wrong. Maybe I have one of the RAM sticks loose, but it's only saying 8 gigs, and that one stick definitely said 8 gigs on its own. Unless it's one of those weird things where it's supposed to be a part of a set and it's supposed to say the 8 gig total for two four paces. Uh, or maybe I just have the one RAM stick loose. But I'm going to go and plug in the drive. And then if the clone didn't work the method I used before, I'm going to clone it directly off of the OS while it's running. I'm going to pretty much avoid getting this online as much as I can just because of the nature of what happened to it, and we'll see if the clone works that way. I'm also going to do this all off screen just because I don't want to expose any personal files that aren't my own without noticing and then forget to blur them out. So give me a minute, I'll cut away. So I downloaded what's known as Mercurium Reflect, I'm probably saying that wrong. It is a software to clone drives, and there's a freeware version of it. I also got this little cassette flash drive that I found in my stuff I forgot about. I was gifted that years ago. It's only a gig, but for transferring small stuff, it's completely fine. Alright, that took a little longer to uh, finish than I thought installing. It's not super long, but still. I'm gonna plug this. I don't know if it's reading the SSD on that flash drive, or that flash drive, the USB port over there. Alright, it's definitely seeing that. So, we we'll refresh. And then we'll clone this disk. Alright, it's smaller, so I'm going to have to do some trickery. This part gets a little annoying. Alright, since the other one is actually deleted, some of the partitions. partitions. Then what I'll do is shrink this volume, and once I make it small enough, it should fit on there with no problem. So how big was that other one estimated at? All right, we'll try to make it around 60 gigs just to start. I think it should be able to stretch past that, but... All right, so... Check it out. 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 it was before, so let's see. If it will still give me an issue. Clone this disk, 
and then we will clone it to this next insufficient space so good news the clone did work okay so evidently that other ram stick might have been loose because that one piece that said it was an 8 gig stick is the only stick in there and right now it says 8 gigs so I'll try another ram stick it's possible I just had the other one loose or it's possible that it might be a now if it was a bad ram stick it wouldn't boot up so I'm going to cut away I'm going to mount the drive in safely and properly and I'm going to run a virus scan. So good news, it looks like I had that RAM stick just kind of loose and it was another 8 gig stick. So I was able to max out the RAM on his unit. Uh, for some reason, it's not using 0.1 gig of it, but still jumping from eight to 15.9 gigs of usable memory is a nice improvement. I'm gonna say that this project was a success and I'm gonna finish up doing other stuff for him and expect me to do a similar project soon. So everybody out there, take care, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hopefully this made it easier for you to understand how to upgrade this unit. Alright, bye for now.